Hello Internet, welcome back to my kitchen. Today we'll be going back to the Cooking Essentials Cookbook, linked in the description for the ISBN if you would like to order it and cook along with me. But today we will be making a quiche and this particular quiche comes from the rear section of the cookbook on page 120 and we'll be making the spinach and mushroom quiche. So one of the things that it says is that you need an eight inch pastry shell baked empty and left in a pan. In other words, you need to blind bake a pie crust. So that's what I have prepared. And you can see this camera rig over here that I am using for the overhead shots. But basically what you do is you get some pie weights and your pie crust from the store or you can make your own pie crust, but I didn't feel like making mine. So I bought mine. And then you can fill it with beans. Or if you want to be fancy schmancy and buy ceramic pie weights, you could do that too. But I am cheap, so I just used some beans that I had sitting around on my pantry for way too long and were expired. And then just put them in a jar and label them pie weights because you can use these over and over and over and over and over. But you get your pastry into your pie dish. In my case, I'm using nine inch shells and a nine inch. Thank you oven for letting me know you exist and are ready. Anyways, nine inch crust for me instead of eight inch. Meh, what are you gonna do about it? <laughs> and then baking beans and you can use either parchment or wax paper. Uh, parchment is a little bit more expensive, but you won't have to deal with the wax getting into your food. It's perfectly fine to eat the wax that's on wax paper. I just prefer to bake with parchment. So we have our parchment paper and our baking beans, and I'm going to slide this in the oven for 10 minutes at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. See you then. Step number one on the recipe is to get the spinach wilting. So I'm going to grab one of the biggest pans that I have in my kitchen. Actually, I think this is my biggest pan. It's not my biggest pot, but it is my biggest pan. And we are going to get a tablespoon and a half of butter and 300 grams of spinach and wilt that all together in here. Also, you'll note that the recipe does not say to put a lid on the spinach to wilt it. In this case, when you're making a quiche, you want to make sure that you're getting more of the liquids out of the vegetables, AKA the mushroom and the spinach. So don't put a lid on it. It'll make it really, really runny. And that's not what we're going for. The directions also say to stir fry over high heat. That would be a very bad decision because butter will burn at high heat. So go to like, medium heat and just take your time with it. Maybe medium low. Look up the temperature at which butter solids burn. You don't want the taste of burnt butter in your quiche. That's what all that spinach looks like after cooking it down. Now we need another one and a half tablespoons of butter and our mushroom and our garlic. Now what the cookbook doesn't tell you is in what order to add the mushrooms and the garlic. You really don't want to add your garlic in too early here or else it might burn. So wait until the end to add the garlic. I actually prefer 
more garlic than most people do. So I did two very large cloves of garlic, which I will add in now that the mushrooms are mostly cooked. You only want to cook the garlic for about one to two minutes or until it starts to get really, really fragrant. Which I know, it's already a very fragrant thing, but it'll get even more fragrant, trust me. There we go. Now I actually don't have large eggs right now in my kitchen, but I do have medium eggs, so I'm just going to use three medium eggs, which if you ever read any of Ida Garten's cookbooks in one of them, I'm not sure which one, or maybe it was a clip of it that I saw of her talking. Anyways, she recommends anytime it says large eggs, use extra large eggs and your baking gets even better immediately. So in my opinion, the more eggs, the better. Then we're going to add a cup of cream, which I would actually recommend using a liquid measure, but I don't know where my liquid measure is at the moment. It might be in the fridge with some tomatoes in it right now, actually. Eh, this works. Use what you have. And then two teaspoons of lemon juice. and then season to taste with salt and pepper. And use a whisk to mix it all up. Okay, we've got our whisking done. Now we can fold in our veg. I would not recommend trying to whisk in the vegetables just because then it gets all stuck in the whisk and that's just not fun for anyone. That looks pretty good. Now we just pour our mixture into our blind baked pie crust. Looks pretty good. And then we're gonna slide it into the oven at 350 for 25 to 30 minutes. So there we have it. Our beautiful mushroom and spinach quiche. It takes about, eh, I would say an hour from prep to finish. And it is totally worth making. I made a, uh, less fatful version of it last week where I used half and half instead of cream, which considerably cuts down the calories. <laughs> but the texture of full fat cream with the eggs to make this quiche is absolutely wonderful. So I wanted to make it the full fat version this time because I really want that texture. So let's talk about how this recipe is written overall. It's a very easy to follow recipe and it's fairly well written. The instructions are definitely clear. I think the only place that they kind of went wrong was saying to stir fry over high heat when using butter. You do not want to burn your butter. I would not recommend doing that. However, if you were using your butter and your spinach together immediately, the amount of water content coming out of the spinach and mushrooms and the fact that there are spinach and mushrooms in the pan aside from just the butter, that might prevent it from burning. But honestly, I wouldn't take the chance on it. The rest of this, however, is fairly clear. You just mix the things together and then throw it in an oven for 25 to 30 minutes. Mine took about 30 minutes for the middle to completely set. And then it says to serve it warm, which I highly agree with. I would say let it cool for, you know, 10 to 15 minutes, just so it has time to completely set once it's out of the oven. But 
oh, this thing is so good. What's even better is quiche Lorraine, but for my vegetarian friends out there looking to make a quiche, this is a pretty good option.